Searchploit is a tool that ethical hackers use to discover exploits. The unique thing about it is all exploits are stored locally, so it's easy to find and use. But before we use Searchploit, we want to make sure that Searchploit is updated. This way you get the latest and greatest exploits. So we can type searchploit-u and hit enter, and we'll let that update. Now, let's get started. I currently have this nmap scan of a system on Hack the Box, and here are the results. As you can see here, we have a service FTP and SSH. And more importantly, it even gives us a version. So VSFTPD 2.3.4 and OpenSSH 4.7 P1. So essentially, when we're using Searchploit, we want to keep in mind that we want to use Searchploit after we have enumerated something. There's no point in looking for an exploit if you don't know what you're looking for. So in this case, VSFTPD 2.3.4. So if you want to actually look for that, we can type in Searchploit VSFTPD 2.3.4. However, I'm going to actually just put it to 2 so we can find more results so I can discuss about it. And here we are. So it does come up with the exploit titles and it tells you the exact exploit and what it does. So it'd be the title. So remote code, denial of service, command code execution, and even if it's a Metasploit module. So this is great. We can look to use some of these exploit. However, there's one big thing that needs to be mentioned is these dot extension files at the end. So we can see some that say dot C. Dot C is written in C code dot py is written in python and dot rb is written in ruby so what this means for you is whenever you see dot rb ruby this means this exploit can be found within metasploit so you can solely use metasploit to run this particular exploit this is why you see the brackets there metasploit right above it is actually the exact same one and we can see it's a dot py denoting Python. So the only difference is one uses Metasploit and the other one at the top, you're going to need to use Python in order to run this exploit. And the last one, .c is C code, as I said previously, and you're going to need a compiler in order to run this code and you're going to need to use dash GCC. Now, I'm not going to show you how to manually exploit this video. I just want you to understand when you see these, you'll recognize them and you'll know exactly what to do. For now, I just want you to understand how Searchploit is used. Now, if you wanted to retrieve one of these exploits because you wanted to test it on in a box, simply we can choose a designated one. I'm going to be choosing the VSFTPD 2.3.4, the Python version. This is because it does match up and I'll show you how to retrieve that. So we can first copy the path. Now I do find this is the absolute easiest way to do it. So we can just simply type in searchploit dash M and the dash M just denotes mirroring. So you're going to mirror a copy of the exploit from the path it's currently at to currently the home under Kali directory. So we can look to use the exploit from there. Let's continue to search for another exploit. Now that that's cleared, Let's look at the next one, OpenSSH 4.7 P1. So once again, we can type in searchploit, and I'm going to type in OpenSSH 4.7, and we're going to hit enter. Sometimes you'll get a range here of 2.3, but less than 7.7, .7, or even less than 6.6. .6. You can always find the most suitable exploit that matches with whatever you're looking to infiltrate. So this is why enumeration is always key, because it'll help you choose the perfect exploit. Now, there's another thing that you will need to know, and it's quite handy to know, quite frankly, is whenever you want to examine the contents of this and you want to see, hey, what is the source of this uh, before I move it over or mirror the files, what you can essentially do is type in search boy, and you're going to type in dash X, and the dash X simply just denotes examine, right? And we can hit whatever you want to examine, and we can see it shows the contents here. And to be quite honest with you, that pretty much sums up the basics of Searchploit. As you can see, it is very easy to use. So we did learn how to find an exploit and how to mirror it to a local directory that's easy to traverse to and easy to use. Now, in my next video, I will cover the manual exploit on exactly what to do after you've mirrored it over, whether it's Python, .c or any other extensions. Um, for now, I will keep you with this. If you do have any issues with Searchploit or you forget anything, you can always do searchploit-help and it will give you the list of commands. Either way, 
Thank you for watching and make sure that this information is used for ethical purposes. The contents of this video is for educational and ethical purposes only. I do not promote the use of any illegal activity. Do not perform any of these actions in this video without permission.